Good morning, everybody. So, it's like 5 o'clock in the morning. I've been up for an hour or two. <laughs> but, um, so this this video this morning, I kind of want to talk about um, how cancer is slowly changing my body and um, how I kind of cope with it. Because I think, you know, as we get older, our bodies do change. And I think a lot of people go through this. And it's frustrating. So, <clears throat> so I'll kind of go back in time a little bit. So before I I had cancer, I was I consider myself, you know, a masculine woman. I you know I jeans and t-shirt kind of gal. You know, out digging holes and working on tractors and cars and getting dirty. I I like that kind of stuff, and I really felt a lot of satisfaction from having the strength and the endurance to do that stuff it was all I was a as a kid I was very athletic and you know I I like playing football and all the sports and I was I was a good athlete I wasn't I, you know wasn't Olympic material but I was good and I was I was really an asset to my teams you know and um, when the cancer hit you know the, of course the medications and chemo they make you tired and they can have other side effects. Um, and that was, that was frustrating. But, um, at, at the time when I was doing the chemo and so, well, the treatments, I'm still doing the chemo and treatments. Um, you know, I was still pretty strong then, you know, back in 2016 when I got diagnosed with a stage four and, um, but it was the, the first line of medication really made me weak just because you know that it reduces the red blood cells and all that and that makes you anemic and tired and you know, you're, you're in, in a sense you're t you're poisoning your body so your body's like I'm you know what are you doing to me <clears throat> so that took you getting used to but that was compared to now that's nothing I mean the fatigue it's it was temporary um so you know, that did take getting some used to. You have to, when you encounter something like that where you have a change in life or health and you're no longer able to perform at the level that you were able to perform at before, it can be very disheartening, very stressful, frustrating. But the thing that we have to remember is nothing stays the same. Everything changes. Everything changes. So we have to learn to accept that we can expect expectations. I've, I'll say a lot in my videos to expect something to stay the same or expect someone to do something. You're setting yourself up for major disappointment. Now, this is not to say that you can't expect yourself to try your best. You can't expect that to try your best. But it's, it's how you use those expect, expectations that can be harmful to your mentality, to your well-being. So, you know, part of, part of being human, being corporeal, <laughs> is that we're in these bodies and they will decay over time. They will wear down. They will, they will become less efficient, less strong, less, you know, have less endurance. We'll have to, we have to accept that. And some of us will, you know, lose that ability faster than others. And a lot of it also depends on genetics how also our mindset, whether we're going to be, you know, trying to push through all this, you know, struggle to stay strong. And that's a big, that's a big, you know, influence. I mean, there's only so much we can overcome with genetics right at this point. But if you have a strong mindset to, to hold on to as much of your youth as possible, okay, it's called the youth, <clears throat> then you will, you, you will persist longer, most likely. Um, however, if you have the mindset, well, you know, I'm getting weaker. I can't do as much. I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, guess what? You won't. You, you'll get weaker and you will succumb sooner to whatever it is that's getting you. Cancer or some other disease or even a mental illness. <clears throat> so a lot of it has to do with what we're thinking and, um, and, and being able to accept the changes and 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 find ways to make the changes, you know, um, just a part of living. 
I mean, as we get older, we all, our bodies slow down. It's natural. The cancer does the same damn thing. You know, the treatments, that is. Well, and the cancer, too. They kind of work together in that sense. But um, we have to accept it. And we have to make a plan. Because, like, I know there's things we like to do, you know. You know, I used to like to ride and train horses. I'm not saying I was a great trainer, but I enjoyed the work I did do. And now my I, my legs are so weak, I, I, I'm afraid the horse pull on me too much on the lead rope, and it might pull me over. So I, now I'm kind of like, hmm, can't really do that anymore. But I can still, you know, go out and groom the horses and take care of them. And every now and then I might be able to do a little bit of, you know, hands-on training. You know, just to maybe correct a behavior, such as pawing when I feed. I really don't like it when horses are impatient and pawing when they feed. So I, I can work on those kind of things. But you have to... If I didn't accept the fact that I'm no longer able to do the hardcore training, I would be very depressed. You know, it's I just have to accept what I can't do the same anymore and focus on what I can do. And like I said, you know, there's still a lot of things I can do. I just have to I have to modify it. So right so for instance, since my legs are so weak, I have lost a lot of muscle in my legs and the damage is from what I've been told is permanent. So I, it's not unlikely that I'll get all of that strength back. I could probably get some of it back, but the, to get the once the muscles have been damaged that way, it's hard to build a new muscle over the damaged parts or through the damaged parts. So I'm kind of stuck. I have to accept that. But you know what I've done to modify that? I've I bought a, a little golf cart because it's you know on a ranch there's a lot of walking and the walking was exhausting for me. My poor little leg muscles and my heart, you know, which is already uh, you know, I have left ventricle um, ejection fractions low, so the heart's not pumping as much blood, you know. So between the heart, the anemia, you know, the general toxicity of the medications and the, the leg muscles being, you know, eaten alive, <laughs> I had to make adjustments in order to be functional. Otherwise, I'd just be sitting in my, my home, you know, depressed and withering, literally withering away. And I'd would probably be dead before Christmas, which is just a few months away. But I'm not that kind of a person. I'm a fighter. I'm I'm a scientist. I, I want to know answers. I want to make things as good as possible for as long as possible. And then, and if I find something that works, I want to share it with other people so that hopefully they can have a better quality of life. Because life isn't just about surviving. It's about living and thriving as much as you possibly can. And not everybody has the same capacity to, to, to live and thrive just because of their circumstances. It's not because, you know, they're bad people or weak people. Um, it's just, it's the circumstances a lot of times. So, um, so you, in order to, you know, find your happiness and as much as you can, and, and of course, you know, happiness is, it's like natural medicine for just about everything. Um, <clears throat> You know, you have to be willing to compromise on what you what you expect out of life. Again, expecting expecting is, is causes grief and suffering. Um, and then what you can get out of life. So, like, so I mean, my hand strength isn't as good because I I also lost muscle. Well, all skeletal muscles were affected by the cachexia, um, which I think I've at least halted for now. So hopefully that means the treatments are working, but that still leaves me with the fact that my body is weakened. So I can still do certain things, but I, I need help now. And I'm, I was one of those people who's like, I really hated asking for help. I really did. It's like, I feel like a burden. But here's the thing to remember. Like me, I like to help people. It gives me a sense of purpose. So if you're one of those stubborn people like I am, and you hate asking for help, just remember... Asking the right person for help makes that person feel joyous because some people get so much joy from helping. So just find that right person, you know, that one friend, you know, but, you know, be careful not to overuse that because that could become, a, you know, you want to become a burden. That I mean, it happens, but, you know, especially when you're just starting out with your, say, your disability, okay? You know, find that one person who, who continuously offers to help you. That's the person who you can tap into from time to time for 
maybe you know if you they, if you need to lift something heavy and you just can't you know say hey George or hey Mary can you come over and help me with this and they'd be like oh yeah I'll be right over you know and then you probably do the task and sit down and chat for a while which is another good thing for our, you know for our mental health is being connected with somebody you know when you're like me and you live alone the having that friend which I do I have somebody I see every day we come up and we take care of the animals every day together that makes a world of a difference. So having one person that you can tap into from time to time to ask for help is one way to cope with the changing of our bodies due to either age or illness. You have to be able to ask for help. And just just listen to the people around you. They they will tell you who who are the ones who wants to be the helpers. You know, it doesn't have to be family. In fact, um you know, I, I know my daughter would help me. Um if I needed it, and certain some things, some things she can't help me with, you know. And that's another thing to also know is who can help you with what. You know, not everybody can help you with everything. You can't. Maybe maybe there isn't a all-in-one friend. <laughs> you know, and and then and then family. You know, possibly I know I, my, a lot of my family is not able or willing to help for whatever reasons, and that's okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe you live far away from your family, and that's just that's. A geological problem um, but it's important to ask for help as, as part of this adjusting to our, our bodies changing and I know it's 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 um, it's hard to do when you're not used to it but just when you do it think oh I'm giving them a little bit of joy because I'm giving them a sense of purpose you know and it's helping me out and it's reducing my stress and it's making them feel better so you're bringing good feelings into the world. That's a good thing. It's okay to ask for help. Um, you know, but, you know, accepting the changes, it can be hard, especially for people who are really independent like me. A lot of men, a lot of women, you know, are very independent. They don't want to rely on anybody, but what are you going to do? Either not get it done or ask for help. You know, I mean... What, another thing I keep in mind to help me through these times when my body goes through a big change like it did recently is to, to, to watch videos of people who are way more, in case you can call it disabled or differently able than I am. I mean, missing legs, missing arms, and they still take care of themselves for the most part. They had to make a lot of um, adjustments in their environment, but they still take care of themselves, you know, and it just it gives you inspiration. So it's important to also keep in perspective your life relative to the life of people who actually have it a lot harder than we do. I mean, I, my life is pretty easy compared to some people around the world. So I'm not complaining. You know, I might be a little grumpy for once in a while because I'm like, the, you know, it takes time to get used to the change. But, when, you know, when your body is going through changes more frequently, it gets easier because you're like, oh, here we go again. I got to make another adjustment again. You know, this last year has been a rough, rough year for changes for me. It's between, well, yeah, well, yeah, about the last 12, 12 to 18 months. And that's when uh, my medications really started to have more permanent effects. For instance, the neuropathy uh, in my feet. So I have to, you know, in order to be able to walk without being in a lot of pain I have to wear orthotics to help support my feet because I it's just the nerves are not happy they're they're not happy and the same thing with the hands when I have numbness in my fingertips so it's hard to feel stuff I, you know, I drop things more frequently so I, and so a way to comp uh, comp compensate for that is I try not to use a lot of glass because <laughs> dropping glass can be uh, not good so plastic is a little bit easier to handle um, yeah, I wear gloves constantly. I have to because, um, my skin is very fragile and my nails are very thin. And so they tend to rip really easily. I mean, rip, not just crack, rip, rip, crack, peel, everything. So, um, I have to wear gloves every time I'm outside. Otherwise I risk, you know, getting an infection. And when you're doing chemo, infection is big worry, you know. So it's another adjustment, you know, but uh, it's it's something I'm willing to do because I want to be able to continue doing as much as I enjoy doing here at the ranch. 
You know, it's not, morning is, in, is just kind of cracking down here. The birds are singing. It's beautiful, you know. It's just, I'm just thankful that I can, you know, still work on fence lines. You know, my hands are still strong enough to do that. Um, I may not be able to pound T-posts anymore unless the ground is really soft. But those darn T-post pounders are pretty heavy, too. One time, I think I was probably about, about a year and a half ago, I was trying to pound one down by my place. And I was able to get the T-post pounder on and, you know, pound, 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 and cut it down. But then I couldn't get it back off. <laughs> I couldn't, I was, I have like, my upper body strength is just so not there. I was just like, I can't get it up. I can't get it. <laughs> but I, um, somehow I managed to like get underneath it, shoved it off, you know, but that, that told me that, well, I guess my T-post pounding days are done. So now I have to ask for help for that, you know, or we have to use one of those special gas powered ones and out those are cool so that's an accommodation so instead of using pound 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 just go brrr, and they're not as heavy as the the big metal pole pounders so they're easier to get up and down in fact when my friend rich and i do it he'll 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 you know rest it on his head and then put it on the t-post and put it back on his head and i'll pick up the next post and he'll put it and so we have a little system you know so it's it's just one of those things where if if you got a problem, try to solve the problem, no matter what it is, you know, um, whether it's just finances or with your kids or with your health, you know, just don't sit there and accept it. Go out there and look for a solution. Ask people. There are solutions to all kinds of problems. And that's that's part of that. I guess the people call it grit. You know, there's these little terms and labels and stuff. I kind of don't like them. But it's having that fortitude to to pers per persevere persevere guys need more coffee persevere on um, so you know if your body's changing in a way you don't like you can work on finding solutions to make it better or you can work on looking for problems to accommodate for those problems if they're not fixable or adjustable like having, you know, like if you're paralyzed, there's ways to work around that, you know, to still be able to drive a car or have a job or be a functional member of society just because your legs don't work, you know. I mean, people who are quadriplegic, they can still contribute emotionally and uh, supportively to their families, even though they need physical help. They can still be there, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a mind to provide assistance in, in, in anything with like, like these videos. I, I could be a pair of quadriplegic and still make videos and make content and entertain people, you know, or, or, or share information or whatever, you know, there's even with no arms and legs, we can still be a productive member of society. It's, it's just, it's a lot more challenging, but think about it when you overcome that challenge, what a victory, you know, that's, the, the best victories are the ones that are hard fought and won. So, you know, the nice thing with the nice thing with cancer is that it, it typically kind of ramps up slowly with the disability creating issues. I mean, I mean, some people I'm sure can have a really rapid progression, but for me, it's been, you know, slowly over time that my body is kind of, kind of telling me it's getting tired of this crap. You know what I'm saying? So, but I'm like, hey, okay, buddy, I understand. So we'll kind of back off on this really hard, heavy stuff. And I won't push you too hard. We have to push a little bit because we don't want you getting too weak. But I understand. So I'll, I'll try to take better care of you. And it, it seems to work. You know, you want, you got to listen to your body and your mind because they, they work together. You know, people think, people really don't think that the body talks, but it does. And you got to listen to it. You know, pain is one, one of the major ways, you know, or fatigue. Even depression can be a sign of your body having issues, not just your mind, because your brain and body are connected in so many, 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 many ways. But, um, I don't know, the light back there keeps flashing. We'll figure that out later, I guess. Anyway, so body changes, you know, and accepting it and working around it, that's a key to prolonging your quality of life and happiness.